Okay, so up to this point, the Blue Lock anime has released about 22 episodes so far, roughly equating to like 80 give or take chapters of the manga. And while you anime only enjoyers have been graced with some pretty dope moments such as Isigi devouring Baro, Chigiri's hyperspeed evolution, and Nagi being him like every time he's on screen. <laughs> I mean, I want to tell you guys that you have genuinely seen nothing yet. So today I wanted to toss a couple rocks from this manga reading glass house that I stand upon and let you in on five moments from the Blue Lock anime that I know you guys are not ready to see animated. Real quick though, we are on the road to 20K and I do believe by the time this video goes out, we will be at 12,000 subscribers. So seriously guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the continued growth on the channel. It honestly means the world to me. You guys know what's up, snacks, cups, blah, blah, blah. But most importantly, don't get lost in my eyes like your mother did last night. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. In case the title hasn't made it already apparent, some of these moments truly can't be put into words, and as sad as it is to say, I really don't see the anime doing them proper justice. Nevertheless, the importance of these moments is simply undeniable, and just know that when they happen, that shit's about to go down. And there's no better place to start than the moment that I believe is going to end off the first season of the anime itself, the introduction of Shido Ryusei. Shido's introduction comes at the end of the second selection. We see him teaming up with that bum-ass monk unable to find an opponent because he's legit beating the shit out of everybody he sees. Like I said, when you see this man for the first time, just know shit's about to get real. <laughs> Not only is he a demon off the field piecing up everybody in his way, but the real magic happens when Shido steps on the pitch. We get just a glimpse at his ability as he easily dispatches both Ryo and Kunigami in the 2v2, more like a 1v2 if we're being quite honest, inevitably dooming Kunigami to the wild card, turning him into the emo boy we all know and love today. Extreme spatial awareness an impressive and strong physique with unreal agility and a scoring ability that is simply unreal, Shido can take over any game as well as stealing the show every single time he pops up on the page. Whether it's some insane super goal or just his out-of-pocket ass comments if we're being quite honest, Shido has become one of the most popular characters in the community while also being not only one of the strongest but most important from a storyline perspective. I mean just think about everything that's happened due to Shido's introduction. Sending Kunigami to the wild card, going goal for goal with Reen in the third selection, outshining both him and Isagi leading to both players evolving in the process, some of the most iconic panels in the entirety of the manga, and Oh yeah, let's not forget that he was the only reason the U20 game was even a little bit close. More on that later though. <laughs> and if you need any other reason to be hyped for the arrival of this demon, I got three words for you. Big. Bang. Drive. While we're on the topic of super goals, we might as well talk about the single most impressive feat on the series so far, Nagi's five shot revolver. Leave it to Nagi to pull some shit off like this, huh? <laughs> we all know that Nagi, while being a lazy motherfucker, is genuinely him in its purest form, and it's shown off best when he pulls this shit off in the Manshine vs. Bastard game. After linking back up with Ryo, the two produce one of the craziest chemical reactions in the entirety of the manga, combining the chameleon's pinpoint passing with the latent potential of everybody's favorite lazy genius, and you get this absolutely next level GOLASSO! Hitting five fake shot volleys, yeah, five! Nagi in this moment managed to not only outplay two Metavision users, but accomplish his goal of finally surpassing Isagi in that moment. I speak for any Nagi supporter when I say that seeing him hit five fake volleys, declare himself the best player in the world, score that impossible ass super goal, land and then celebrate about it. Bro, I I'm telling you, jaw on the floor, bricked up. With a tear in my eye! Shout out Ric Flair, that goal's great. As I mentioned when talking about the five shot, Nagi took pride in the fact that he surpassed Isagi, as that was the sole objective of his play up until that point. This is for a good reason, because currently in the manga, Isagi is really like that. <laughs> Obviously, he still has his weaknesses, such as his physical ability. However, this hasn't stopped him from being one of the most dominant and impactful players every time he's on the pitch. And that is why the next moment, or moments, I should say, that you anime fans truly aren't ready for is the evolution of your favorite puzzle builder, Isagi Yoichi. You've already gotten your first glimpse of Isagi being... Himothy in the second selection, his devouring of Baro in the 3v3, as well as going blow for blow with Reen in the 4v4, respectively being dope as fuck. Now, I know it may seem like he's already him, but trust me, you haven't seen shit. <laughs> you have not seen shit. Isagi's ability, at least in the current state of the manga, is light years above where he is in the anime right now. He's improved not only his direct shot, but his off-ball movements are borderline untraceable, and don't even get me started on Metavision, because that is a whole Pandora's box of information right there. And the evolution isn't strictly about his skill. No, the real terror is the change in this man's mindset. The amount of disrespect and ego that this man accumulates over a very short period of time is astronomical. Seeing the Goofy who cried after losing the 4v4 calling the number one youth striker in all of Germany, who was on his own team by the way, a clown, is absurd. Absurd! Not to mention heinous acts such as telling Yuki he'll send his pathetic fantasies to hell. 
saucing Nagi, Ryo, and Shigiri, and letting them know about it while he did it. <laughs> Snubbing the world's number two. Dear God, dude. God, he's a societal ecological threat. Obviously, this is something that we were bound to see eventually, as he is our MC. And we can't expect him to just be a bum for the rest of his life, but deadass, I don't think anybody expected him to be like this. <laughs> this is ridiculous. He's out of control. Speaking of Isagi and the current position of the manga, the next moment we have to discuss leads us to the most current arc in the Blue Lock manga, that being the formation of the Neo Egoist League. The biggest football league designed to sharpen the ego of each Blue Lock participant by putting them up against the best of the best competition possible. Five separate clubs were invited to represent their respective countries as well as being accompanied by a master striker. Those five teams being Italy's Ubers, led by the crown messenger Mark Snuffy, PXG and its 17-year-old prodigy Julian Loki coming out of France, Spain's FC Barcha with the dancer Lavinio leading the charge, as well as Chris Prince and Manshine City representing England, and finally we have Germany's Bastard Munich, with the world's number one Noel Noah seated firmly at the helm. I want to make an entire video strictly dedicated to the Neo Egoist League once we've seen all of the teams, so I'm not going to go too in-depth for now. But this is arguably the biggest thing to happen to the Blue Lockers so far. Not only does it give them the opportunity to play against world-level competition, but it also allows them to actually get monetary offers from legit professional teams, securing the fact that they'll have careers even if they're not the winners of Blue Lock. The reason no one's ready for this simply comes down to the intensity of the games. If the matches against Barcha and Manshine so far is anything to go off of, the final two games we're going to see are are about to get absolutely wicked, as the difficulty of opponents seem to be scaling upwards. Starting from Bachira, then to Nagi X Rio, now Baro, and then finally finishing off with Reen. It's almost as if the Neo Egoist League is a way to see if Isagi's evolution is enough for him to surpass his former adversaries, but actually do it on his own this time, whereas before he did it with the help of his team. Either way you slice it, I don't think the hype's gonna do it justice. There is just way too many insane moments that have already taken place in the Neo Egoist League, to the point where you should honestly be expecting an iconic moment almost every week that there's an episode during that arc. From the B shot to the 44 Panther snipe, Lavinio's dance of death, Noel Noah's ambidextrous assassination, Kaiser impact, and then the birth of Metavision Isagi. And quite frankly, the arc is just getting better and better. It's definitely the largest scale that the Blue Lockers played on up to this point in the manga so far, but somehow it's still not the peak of the manga itself. That would come in the form of our last topic, the Japan U-20 game. Now, I know, I know, I know. This may seem like a little bit of an obvious one. Oh, clip. Everyone knows about the U-20 already. This is a lame one. Shut the hell up. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The Japan U-20 game is the pinnacle of the Blue Lock manga, and until truly greater stakes are met, it's gonna remain that way for the rest of the series. Just think about the stakes here. 11 of the best strikers in Japan tasked with teaming up 80% out of position, keep in mind, in a must-win scenario that would determine not only their futures, but the future of Japanese soccer itself. I've been shying away from making an in-depth U20 video as it's honestly really dense and requires a lot of flushing out. But for now, let's just talk about some of the high points and if I ever get around to that video, then you'll know all the details of the U20. But honestly, I'd say just read it or wait for the anime. You definitely shouldn't have it spoiled for you. We finally get to see the overwhelming ability of Atoshi Sai as he effortlessly dismantled the team of strikers, basically at will. Nagi opened up the scoring, love to see it, biking the hype level and setting the tone for the rest of the game. Reen shines as the true ace in my opinion, dominating the U20 on his own on multiple occasions, with the looming threat of a goal-hungry and rapidly evolving Isagi Yoichi lurking in his shadow the entire time. Now let's talk about the substitutions. He already showcased what he had in that mysterious ass bag of his while Ryo became a standout using his chameleon style to become a true Swiss army knife for the team. Baro subbed in for his selfish egoist hunt, managing to surprise the U20 and score a game-saving goal, keeping the hopes of all Blue Lock players alive and giving us one of the coolest panels in the entirety of the manga. Anime, don't fuck this one up. And of course, <laughs> you can't bring up the U20 without mentioning Shido Ryuse. Scoring two of the most impossible goals in the entirety of the series in the same match, by the way, countless iconic panels and some of the most suspect ass comments that you are ever going to see in a manga. Shido has to be the MVP for the entire arc from a player standpoint to a entertainment standpoint to a dope standpoint. Shido was just the best during this arc. He was by far my favorite. And I truly, I think my personal favorite part has to be the ending as there is no better way to end off the game than with the egoist Isagi Yoichi becoming the true hero of Japan. All of this and much more from funny one-liners to traumatic ass backstories, the U-20 is truly the best arc in all of Blue Lock and it's gonna stay that way for possibly the rest of the series, who, who knows. It truly is the best that it gets and regardless of any of the hype you've heard, nothing is going to prepare you for this absolute dopamine.
overload. And I mean, the same kind of goes for all five of the moments I talked about for that matter, as well as many other moments in the manga that didn't make my list. Uh, the New World 5 game as well as the third selection immediately come into my mind. And that just goes to show you how truly great the manga gets if great moments like those two didn't even make it on this list. The funniest part is every time I see people talking about how Blue Lock has Black Force energy, or it's on Demon Time, or it's the most savage-ass anime possible, Guys, the anime sucks. <laughs> the anime is nothing compared to the level of disrespect that you see in the manga. But, I mean, who knows? We can kind of just pray the budget goes up so everything looks good. <laughs> uh... I think that's all i got today thank you so much for tuning in as always i really do appreciate it if you enjoyed make sure to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel with post notifications turned on so you never miss another banger from myself again let me know in the comments down below one moment from the blue lock manga that you cannot wait to see animated and that's all i got for you today love you guys take it easy